Okay, so today we have uh, one more webinar and we are going to talk about what is done that you were supposed to cover, what is done that you were supposed to learn and how you should change your answering approach. So by this time, you were supposed to go through 12 chapters. And I know that not every one of you did because, well, yes, you joined different types times uh, and uh, despite the fact that we encourage everyone to start studying for the exam as early as two months before the exam, I know that some of you have recently joined us, so you are somewhere in your first chapters. But it is very important for you to speed up because as this is a skills-based exam, so you basically need to know how to write an essay and this means that you need to practice, it would be great if you have time to absorb the knowledge and to absorb the skill and to change it. So this is an exam that is very hard to get prepared within a week because practice is needed to, to write answer that is good and that is going to score marks. Now, talking about assessment, progress test and so on. Uh, the policy is uh, like that. So we have um, this early bird promotion. So those of you who have joined at the very launch of the program, obviously you have uh, more ability, you have more assessments to submit. As such, you can start more, you can have more practice. And I think that that is fantastic. Well, uh, those of you who have joined a little bit later, well, uh, this is how it usually works. The earlier you join, the more benefits you have. And we... Uh, do not accept assessments and progress tests late. Late, why? Well, because uh, we tried that and uh, the problem is that many, many students just take it till the very last week and then they start learning and they start sending the assessments and then the review and there are lots of mistakes and they have to correct those. And uh, it's too little time for them to incorporate whatever I am writing to them. So as such, it is super important for you to start to do these assessments as soon as possible. Now, talking about the assessment that you've had on um, quality cost. Well, quality cost is tested in a very special way. And there is an order of how you are supposed to answer the question. Well, let's read the requirement. Comment on the extent that directors are right. So this means that we need to say that on one hand they are right, on the other hand they are not. Providing illustrations that might be appropriate to car. Providing illustrations means that we, the best case scenario is that we take copy paste from the whatever is there. Uh, however, if it is not possible, we just take um, and talk about whatever is that about the industry like that cars require safety. Uh, you are going to have a more progress test and assignments between now and exam. You have, um, uh, let me just check our schedule. You have your MOOC that you can send. So it's going to be for all chapters. And the sooner you send it to me, the sooner you can incorporate your my comments to your answer. Okay, uh, and the second one is discuss how performance management systems should change if Kafka is to implement total quality management. So this is totally separate requirement. So how performance management systems should change. Performance management system means software. And this means that you are supposed to talk about software. And uh, every time when we have this question on performance management systems, it's about software. There are just some very, very rare exceptions where it's just a system of performance management. Now, look, we have numbers here. And uh, on a normal day, numbers means that we need to use them because all of the elephant in the all of the elephants in the room need to be talked about. Uh, so uh, let me go through your uh, through this very uh, text and try to see what are the elephants in the room that we need to discuss. 
So Copcar hold a stake in Wendemacher, a manufacturer of passenger cars. And the recent board meeting of Car of sorry of this uh, Wendemacher, mm -hmm. uh, there were debates about the company's uh, performance. One of the directors said that the company should aim at reducing all quality costs to zero. Uh -huh. Look, this elephant in the room is all quality cost to zero. Uh, so we need to talk about quality cost. And on a normal day, when we have a question relating to quality cost, we get marks for discussing what each and every cost of prevention, appraisal, internal failure and external failure mean. So we usually get from two to four marks on definitions. We do not get marks for just saying what cost of conformance are and what are the cost of non-conformance, but we get marks for explaining what prevention, appraisal, and so on means. And that was the key to the answer. So you were supposed to understand that, um, look, there is an opinion, and uh, an opinion needs to be challenged because it may as well be that the opinion is wrong or is based on wrong assumptions. In this case, the opinion is based on wrong assumptions because it is likely that the director thinks about quality cost as cost of appraisal. So as supervisors that are going to be checking something. But there are actually other categories. So uh, we can see that this is what the director is thinking because uh, further, we have this clarification that he suggested to give employees who currently check the produced cars and car parts for the fact some other task. So this director is clearly talking about just appraisal cost, and we need to comment on that. That will significantly boost productivity and will improve dividend potential. Mm. Uh, okay, that is an opinion that needs to be questioned. So we need to say, will it increase or not the productivity? And uh, we need to explain why. So we need to explain the mechanism, the logics of the event and improve dividend potential. So again, we will need to explain why. Will it or not? Well, maybe not, because uh, if uh, our conformance costs are decreased, it may as well be that non-conformance costs are going to increase and uh, they're more hurtful and the such dividend potential might as well decrease. There, the director said that first, Abolishing and quality control may give in place the wrong impression that the quality is not important anymore. Well, uh, I know that some of you use this uh, definition, this uh, quote, what gets measured gets done, but it is important to also explain why. Well, uh, because if uh, managers, uh, KPIs, communicate to employees and to the managers what is the most important. So if uh, that matter is not communicated by means of KPIs, this means that it may just be forgotten, missed, uh, perceived as not relevant, especially if there is no bonus attached to it. Uh, okay, besides there are some other quality costs and some of them may be hidden in other expenses. So we were supposed to uh, talk about these other expenses, is about these overheads, like cost of design, for example, uh, like cost of teaching employees. And you need to talk about each and every elephant in the room. Finally, the CFO complained that uh, she had been raising, raising concern of substituting its old performance management system. So this is the part that relates to the second question that works only with financial information to a new one that will give the ability of a more robust analytics. And uh, uh, that is something that relates to part, uh, to part B. And we have this question, this question B, that talks about total quality management. Total quality management is um, some new model, some new management uh, philosophy approach that hasn't been disclosed in this scenario, meaning that you get from one to two marks for just definition. So you should start with that. Then you will need to talk about what is needed from, from data. So 
And then you will need to talk about how it will impact the change in performance management system. Like that, the system will need to collect not only financial, but also non-financial information. The system will need to be able of uh, adapting because uh, the process is unlikely to be changed and so on. Now, that is how we would approach it. And I'm going to put the, the answer so that you could see. And now I would like to comment on the comments that I made uh, to your works. And if you see that there are many comments and many problems, it is okay. That is actually great. This means that you are learning. You didn't know that before, now you do. Now, uh, uh, let us uh, uh, talk about uh, this uh, second column. Cost of confirmance are costs that incurred before the completion of the final product. Well, that is the misconception that I've seen in uh, two works. Now, cost of conformance are costs that are borne before any failure at any stage occurs. It doesn't matter whether the product is final or whether it's just the early stage of production. Cost of non-conformance are costs that are related to to defects, to failures. And it doesn't really matter whether it's a failure of the whole car or of just some component at an early stage of production. So this definition is wrong and as such, it will unlikely uh, to bring you marks. They consist of prevention costs and costs of appraisal and inspection. Mm, no, they consist just of cost of prevention and appraisal. So, because your definition is wrong, because you are giving something that was not supposed to be there, you will not get any marks. Cost of confirmance are costs that are incurred. Okay, that one was okay. That one was okay. Uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, me. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, let me see what I have written there. How do I resume it? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yes, great example. Uh, look, uh, so the person who wrote there, and it's not only this work, there are like several of you have done that. For example, the cost of checking input materials for quality control ensures the quality of raw materials, which will contribute to overall reliability and safety of the final product. Well, we should not start our a uh, sentence, our paragraph with the for example. We should not start our paragraph with the for example, because if it is for example, it means that it relates to something that was before. But still, in this case, the cost of checking input materials for quality is only 100, which can be seen to be ignored by Capcar because it is significantly lower than the other quality control cost. Uh, ignoring this process may significantly affect the end quality of the final product, and uh, uh, okay, uh, so look, the start of this uh, paragraph related to reliability and safety, and then there was something about costs. Uh, we cannot give an example uh, to that is different compared to whatever was uh, originally stated. So this means that uh, you will not get marks for that. Okay. Uh, now, uh, in, uh -huh. if you have a, a sentence that repeats something, the idea that you have already discussed, like functionality and safety of cars, your idea will not give you any additional marks. So it is important that everything that you write is new. It is especially important for advanced performance management because in this exam, you do not have enough time. So every sentence that you write in vain here means that you will not be able to complete the last question you attempt. And as such, every wrong sentence, every empty sentence, actually steals marks for you. So please do not do that. 
Uh, okay. And yes, I am writing recordings to you on WhatsApp, clarifying some of uh, the things. What if you want, you can just download them to a playlist uh, or you can listen to them in WhatsApp. And uh, that could be nice for you to just go again and revise before the exam because there I talk about key points and key misconceptions. So please use this source of knowledge as well. Uh, now, um, bam, 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 bam. Uh, let me see another. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, the director suggested that eliminated and quality control might give employees the wrong idea that quality is not important. That is fantastic. That is copy-paste from the scenario. This is exactly what we are supposed to do. This concern from the director is correct, given the fact that the cost of warranty service is only 130 uh, thousands or millions or whatever, which is low, and it means that Capcore does not pay enough attention towards the external failure cost. Um, uh, well, we cannot say that because maybe it is not, it is low now because uh, our processes are good. Maybe because our quality checks at early stages are good, not um, because the quality is low. Uh, another very good example is here. Look at this paragraph. This paragraph starts with this. A paragraph cannot start with this. It, for example, because um, uh, the thing is that uh, each and every paragraph is an isolated thought or set of thoughts. And as soon as uh, the paragraph finishes, uh, the buffer in uh, the marker's head, in the examiner's head, is reset to zero. And as such, all of the examples, all of the explanations that start from the new line will be ignored. Let me give you this example once again. If I write it like that, uh, it's raining. Uh, it's cold. I need uh, to wear uh, warm waterproof shoes. I will not get marks. If I write it like that, I will not get marks because uh, if it is cold, it doesn't mean that I need to wear um, warm waterproof shoes. I can just wear some warm shoes. But if I write it like that, then I will get my mark because I have um, prepositions and I have a conclusion. And that is what we need to do. We need to make sure that the statement that we are challenging is in the same paragraph. Otherwise, you do not get any marks. Uh, bam, bam, bam. Uh, okay. Uh, it is very important to understand which part of the scenario relates to WhatsApp question. And usually you can see that by because easily because they will be in different exhibits. But still... Uh, you need to answer the question that was set. And uh, this first question that you are answering has nothing to do with performance management systems. So everything that is here on performance management systems will be ignored. It's just the thoughts that you wrote and they're not marked. Now going next, <coughs> we need to discuss how performance management systems should uh, change. So this means that we need to talk about software and uh, it is very important to use verbs correctly. So in here, you say that implementing total quality management will allow Copcar to integrate quality uh, and uh, other customer centric metrics, uh, such as number of defects based on the uh, total number of products, blah, blah, blah. So it will not allow, no, because uh, allowing means doing something that is favorable for some other process. In this case, if we want to implement auto quality management, we will need to integrate these metrics. And a very, very, very bad mistake in this very paragraph is listing. Please, and I cannot stress it, I, I will, 
it breaks my tutor's heart to keep explaining it over and over again. Please do not use uh, commas. Please do not use ands and ors. You cannot list. That is a professional level exam. You are forbidden to list ideas. Every time you list ideas, you're losing marks. You are not explaining properly. Just choose one and put one idea, not like that. You stole your time from the last question that you are going to attempt. So you lost a mark there because you're not able to attempt it. And you lost mark here because by listing, you are not justifying properly. There is no universe that would give you marks in professional level exam for listing. It's not um, audit and assurance. Well, in that exam, maybe. It's not in any other fundamental level exam. In here, we are not supposed to do that. Okay, now, look, uh, the answer was broken down correctly, and I really like the subcaptions and uh, um, all of that. But as the answer related to the wrong question, it will not score any marks. And that is very sad. And uh, that is why there are many people who go to ABM exam and they feel like they got the topics that they were more or less okay with. So they remember them. But when they get their work, they see that they scored uh, 20, 30 marks, something like that. That is because they are misinterpreting questions. So this is something that happened here. So please, it's better to spend more time trying to comprehend the question rather than writing something that, uh, that is wrong. Okay, do you have any questions so far? Okay, if no questions yet, uh, let's talk um, about... Uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, okay, yes, uh, another problem with the definition of conformance. Uh, and... Uh, uh, okay, uh, well, prevention cost is not the premium paid by for purchasing improved quality materials. Look, you cannot make a definition by just giving an example. So prevention costs are costs that are experienced to prevent errors from happening. Uh, you can give an example. So for example, paying premium to buy improved quality materials, but is it, but that is not definition. You can say that uh, purchasing improved quality materials is an example of prevention cost, but it is not a definition. As such, this uh, sentence will never support any marks. Uh, okay, uh, appraisal cost is the cost of maintenance of machinery used to test the safety of the car. Uh, well, again, this cost that is given here relates to appraisal cost, but this is not a definition, so it will not give you any marks. Now going next, uh, bum, 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 bum. let me see here. Uh, so the client uh, that purchased the car from Copcar expects the final product car to be able to drive. This means that Copcar incur an additional cost apart from standard production cost because it is a check-in safety of a car is not going to prevent client still doing their internal assessment. Uh, well, that was a very... Um, um, a broken thought okay so it's really hard to follow it but uh, what i would like to talk about like in relation to this uh, two paragraphs in total is that um, people customers uh, doesn't really matter if uh, there are people or entities do not really care about our quality cost it's like you go into a dentist when you go to a dentist despite the fact that you do want quality, despite the fact that quality is important, you want your dentist to perform your uh, his or her job right the first time. And you do not want to pay some extra money for someone else who will go and look at uh, how they treated the cavity for you. And uh, I mean, why you expect dentists to be a professional and uh, do the job correctly the first time. Uh, so what we would like to do 
well, we would like for the product to be of the best quality the first time we make it and so will the customer. We can say in relation to car industry that safety can be perceived as additional value. So maybe the customer will be willing to pay more now and then there are robust safety procedures, but on a normal day, safety cars do not add any value and we need to talk about that. And uh, we are, and we cannot say that there is need for external failure cost because there is no need for external or any other non-conformance cost. It's just that they happen. It's not because we need or want them. Now, uh, going next. Okay. Uh, so this means that removing the cost of warranty service will influence kind, client's decision to purchase the car. Well, we were not talked about this. Uh, there was nothing in the scenario that would relate that company wants to uh, let go of warranty service to stop giving some warranty. So we cannot just come up with this idea and uh, put it into the examiner's mouth. Uh, okay. Um, now, um, one second, what was that? Mm -hmm. Oh, here. Oh, oh okay. Um, however, the other director's comment is not valid. You need to say which comment. So like that uh, quality is uh, important or that uh, what is measured is done and so on. So you need to make sure that your answer is self-sufficient, that uh, the reader of your report or your memo does not need to go to the original report. Now, now what else is uh, very important? Not to say that there is not enough information in this scenario. Now, because uh, the assumption is that the scenario that you've got is uh, the summary of the information that you retrieved from your customer, from your client, uh, for you as a consultant. So, if you do not have any more information, it's just that uh, you were not able to retrieve any more information. And you cannot say that the scenario does not have. No, that's that's all you have. So treat it as uh, the full scope of information. Uh, our responses in this exam typically this lands uh, to get marks. Uh, you get marked for one relevant point. One relevant point is a sentence that has because therefore as such. So usually it fits two maximum three lines of your text document. And you can see on the right side, yes, I'm marking how many marks. Well, this is a, a good work. So you can see that there are many marks awarded. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, let me go and uh, see what was what else was there. Uh, aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, that was submitted to the system, so it was not with um, my comments, but rather like that. The first director suggested that the, uh, the firm should aim to reduce the quality cost as it does not add value to the customer. However, as much uh, as uh, the customers may be a main stakeholder, there are others. Uh, well, that is not really a uh, however, right? Because, uh, well, however means, like on one hand, on the other hand, but they are different, they are opposing uh, ideas, and uh, this clearly is not. And we were not uh, asked to talk about uh, other um, stakeholders from the start. So we need to talk about whatever is in the scenario first and then go into what else is there. Uh, so also, it is important to give proper explanations. Let's read this sentence together. This could also lead to a lesser quality product being distributed, which may affect Capcar even more in the long run. So you need to explain the logics of that. So uh, lesser quality products means that um, the customers would not recommend the cars, which uh, will reduce future sales and uh, it will affect Capcar even more in the long run. Need to show the logics of the event. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, okay. Oh, and the rest 
Uh -huh. uh, it is important to make sure that your sentences are not only pretty, but also are actually answering the question. So that was a question on the changes to performance management systems. The management team should also try to get staff involved in uh, regard to the migration. That does not relate to the changes in performance management system because it does not relate to what that system should be capable of doing, right? So it will not bring you any marks. Um, that is it. Oh, okay, and that is it with this uh, quality cost. Do you have any questions? Okay, if no more questions, then uh, how about we go and read uh, another example. I am going to show you how about you spend like two minutes reading this first part, this part A. Because this is tested very often. Okay, uh, so uh, let's read that. Parlet is a group of companies that sells furniture in Zealand, a medium income country. Okay, that is an elephant in the room, and Zealand, a wealthy country. It has uh, production facilities located in Zealand and Zealand. And uh, that's, so we have uh, Zealand that only produces, and we have Zealand that sells and produces, and Zealand that only sells. Uh, right. The stores either sell the furniture that is produced by the manufacturing division of Farrell, or it sells items that were produced by a third party. At the last manager's meeting, the manager of Zealand selling division, argued that the performance evaluation of Zealand sales division is unfair. The CEO would like you, our uh, performance management expert, to look at the extracts from PL of the silent division below and explain why the performance evaluation based on net profit results may be unfair. So not wrong, but unfair. And he would also like you to explain why the calculation of profit used for evaluation of a division and of the manager can be different. So in here, we come to the topic of a controllable and traceable cost. Look, uh, we can have some financial statements and uh, financial statements will show us accounting result of a division. But um, that accounting result is not very fitted for the evaluation. When we are talking about the manager, we want to control and um, we want to appraise the manager based on their actions. As such, we need to use only controllable profits. So this means that everything that is allocated should be taken away. And uh, as uh, for division, we would like to take those costs that participated in revenue creation, like design, like marketing that was held at a group level and was allocated to the division. But probably we do not want to pay for the costs that, that are just allocated but do not bring any value, like head office cost or finance cost if, uh, if they are charged on the wrong basis. So in this case, we have this um, extract from their PL, and uh, we see that there is revenue. We see cost of variable cost of production, transportation cost, and we see markup. And markup is uh, based on the 
total variable of production, uh, cost of production and transportation cost. And we have uh, other costs like marketing, finance cost, net profit. Okay, so um, we need to talk about the unfairness of the results. And uh, to do that, we will need to actually look at the numbers here. It is unusual, but uh, these are the elephants in the room. What are the elephants in the room that are very, very eminent? Well, dividends pay to the head office. So because um, our um, company, that uh, this uh, bill and sales division pays a very has a very high payout ratio. This means that less cash is left with the business. So it means that there is less ability, smaller ability to pay our finance cost. Uh, now, will it be fair? No, it will not. It will be unfair. So we will say that yes. And the manager has a point because dividend to payout ratio is different and blah, 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 finance costs are going to be different. Now, what else? Uh, well, we see revenue, we see markup, right? And we see the margins that they earn, right? Okay, and... Uh, Yes, so we, uh, okay. And we can see that uh, the uh, costs, that the cost base is different because of the transportation, because they had to import something from different division, right? So we can talk about that. And uh, it will be very important to actually see three questions in this one question. So why unfair? Uh, what is controllable and traceable? profits and uh, uh, examples of this controllable and uh, um, traceable profits relevant to the scenario. Now, the next question is, I'll go ahead and uh, read through this is BCD, and then we're going to look at the example of the answer. Okay, let's uh, read that together. So uh, the manufacturing division, on the other hand, are complaining that they're evaluated based on the profit end. However, the transfer price they charge uh, is calculated as a mock-up on variable cost only. And they argue that the transfer price should be based on market price. They evaluate the extent to which the change in transfer price calculation from variable cost of 20% markup to the market price would be fair and would lead to the reduction of dysfunctional behavior. Well, for some reason, maybe st many students have misconception that uh, market price will be higher than more variable cost plus 20% markup. It's not necessarily the fact. And some students have this misconception that variable cost plus markup can be higher, can be lower than total cost plus markup. No, uh, it's just that markups are going to be different. So it may as well be that charging variable cost plus 20% markup is the same as charging total cost plus 10% markup. So uh, it does not necessarily mean that the price is lower. But uh, our question is about fairness and, uh, uh, and would lead to reduction in dysfunctional behavior. So in, uh, in wrong decisions to buy from third party, for example, or on the wrong, to the wrong decision of uh, not to increase the output or to the wrong decision of not to improve the quality of um, materials or to buy too expensive materials or whatever. So that is what we need to talk. 
and uh, so improve the perception of transfer price and reduction of dysfunctional behavior. Now, uh, part C, Farrell wants to open a brand new division that will provide maintenance to the furniture itself, for example, dry clean sofas or polished wooden tables. The CEO would like you to illustrate how the management of service division is different from the management of manufacturing divisions. So this is a clear testing of um, the specifics of a service division so that there is intangibility, perishability, uh, sustain, um, simultane simultaneously and so on. So we will need to take this definitions and we need to make an example relevant to tables. So we will have um, two marks for each and every specifics of uh, the service division. Finally, the CEO is worried about falling profit margins and would like you to illustrate how value chain management could help Farrell to identify areas for improvement and would like you to justify up to five indicators that would help to manage profit creation by Farrell. Mm. So illustrate how means that you need to take the model and talk about each specific part of the model. However, please pay attention that in value chain management, there are five uh, primary activities and five secondary activities. And uh, it is likely that you will get two marks for each activity. So you need to choose which ones you are going to discuss. You cannot give an answer that is too excessive because uh, you will waste time and uh, you will get this maximum you will reach this limit on marks in the middle of the question, and the rest that you write is going to be in vain. In vain, because look, in here we need not only to illustrate how value chain management could help, but also to justify, right? So it's just five activities, not 10. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is very important that two separate ideas are not in a single paragraph, or if they are in a single paragraph, they should be separated with words such as besides also. So let us have a look here. Therefore, the expectation for profitability would be different in the two regions where Villand may be expected to generate higher profit. With different expectations, each region will have a different approach to its capital allocation strategies. Uh, so um, profit and capital allocation strategies, uh, um, and then we have, uh, there's, this could be explained by the difference of 50% uh, in the dividends uh, paid. So these ideas are very different to just be like that in a single sentence, in the single paragraph. So use the word besides. Uh, in addition, this would also affect price strategy of both divisions, while we were told that markup is the same. Uh, okay. Mm, okay. Yes, and I think that that is it. I did not want... Hold on a second. Uh -huh. uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh. Mm. Currently, there is no information related to fixed cost on Farrell. However, the use of variable cost markup can result in insufficient pricing if Farrell's fixed cost accounts for a larger proportion of total cost. Therefore, market-based uh, transfer pricing encourages Farrell to focus on value-adding activities. That is not a consequence. Uh, it's uh, um, this uh, previous paragraph. It does not mean that uh, market-based approach will make it focus on value-adding activities. Uh, it's a separate exercise and not every company that uh, uses market-based approach to set prices focuses on value-adding activities. So you cannot just invent this thing. Okay, and I think that this is it. So yes, look, this is an example of an excessive answer. So this is part D. Uh, Oh, no, it's not part D. What was that? Part E probably here. Up, 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 here. Aha, uh -huh. well, I, mm, my work stated that there were 10 marks. Hold on a second, I will look 
，很大气。砰砰砰。嗯。Oh, that was fifteen marks. Yes. Oh, okay. So yes, uh, up to five indicators. Well, that um, still that part was uh, looked like too much for just fifteen marks. But anyways. Uh, now, if you have any questions, you can ask them. And then we are going to talk about um, a few types of questions that require a certain approach to answer. Okay, so <clears throat> questions that require a certain workflow. Well, first, that is um, performance report evaluation. And we have already discussed that last time. Then it's a uh, Mandelos matrix. Uh, to get the full mark, we will need to have a quote and tell what it means in terms of power, have a quote, what it means in terms of interest, then we need to conclusion to the Mandelos metric. So whether it's key players, satisfy, and so on. And then we will need to talk about the question itself. So most likely it will be about KPIs, so performance measures. We will need to say whether they are adequate or not. Another type of question that requires a, a certain approach is um, risk this um, maximax, maximum, minimax regret and uh, expected values. First of all, we are going to quote. Then we need to say what it means and uh, the name of the method. So, for example, um, the shareholders are very ambitious and uh, would like to get as much wealth as possible. This means that they are going to choose the option that will provide uh, uh, um, the best possible result, regardless of probabilities. This is called maxima true. Then we need to say what is the number. So the highest possible outcome of uh, is uh, 20,000 and it is achieved if uh, option let's say big is chosen and then you need to talk about however uh, so about drawbacks of the decision benefits or both depending on the question uh, the next topic that we will use that we will talk about is not for profit organizations and 3e there, you start with the definition of an E. So, for example, that economy is a, how cheap a unit of uh, input is purchased. Then you will need to justify the measure. So you will need to say that as, let's say, doctors are the main input of a hospital, then um, salary per doctor is uh, the, the measure of uh, economy. Then you need to measure and compare. And you need to talk about the drawbacks of the measure, but uh, the drawbacks should not be related to other E's. So we've already covered that uh, in the example when we had three E. So when we are saying, let's say that um, this uh, hospital does not create economy because uh, the salary of a doctor is higher than national average. Well, we cannot say, but maybe doctors are more effective because it will uh, be related to some other eve to effectiveness. Instead, what we need to say is that, uh, um, let's say, maybe the specialization of the hospital is uh, different and it requires uh, the specialties that are higher paid. And um, also, the topic that we covered today is quality. And for quality, we need to give uh, definitions of uh, prevention, appraisal, internal failure, and external failure. 
and we need to calculate if it is uh, if the numbers are down. And we would need to also talk on the relative importance that uh, it is important to invest more in cost of conformance so that we do not have the company does not have cost of non conformance. So uh, that is very important to remember the workflows for these topics because, um, well, this is how you get the maximum marks out of these questions, and it's not that hard. So it would be sad to just skip it. Do you have questions? Okay. Uh, if no questions are asked, then once again, let's go to our system and see what is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so in your advanced performance management course, you have lectures. Let's see, there are different chapters. And uh, by this week, you were supposed to go up to chapter 12. If you have not, please speed up. It's not that much time that is left before the exam. We have lots of content because we have not only theory that is broken down into this small parts that you can watch even while you're drinking coffee or um, just uh, waiting for your bus or whatever. So please do, please try to study when when you have this three minutes. And uh, But please do not be overwhelmed with this content because if you look at the message from your tutor, you will see that there is a priority and it is super important to follow this priority. So to do something that is the most important first and then if you have time, because yes, we are adults, we are limited in time to do anything else. Now, it is very important to go and uh, actually study all of these uh, chapters uh, uh, up to 14. So uh, up to this strategic performance issues in complex business organizations, because they give you the full theory. But then before the exam, and I would say like something like two weeks before the exam, I would really suggest you to go and uh, study this uh, exam skills and revision mm. because there I talk on the most important topics and I summarize it with having in mind that you already know the full theory, but maybe there are some links that are missing. So please go and watch there. These are fantastic lectures that uh, summarize everything that was there. And they will save you lots of time on review. And also you have a uh, uh, topic, uh, th this special additional questions. And if you want some more practice, you can go and see them. And uh, I would really suggest that you um, put that as a priority compared to just doing any past papers. Why? Well, because when I write my answer, I make sure that it is structured so that you would know, oh, so that you would know how marks are earned compared to the past paper when quite often it's really hard to say what is that that they mean. And yes, uh, you have a uh, time up to, uh, let me just check the schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have time up to, uh, I think that up until the last week before the exam to submit your mock. And uh, please try to find the time. So maybe it's better to start earlier rather than later. Uh, right. And... Um, Please find that time and do that so that you would get my comments. And it's better to submit at least something than nothing at all, because if you submit nothing at all, you will not have any comments and will not know what you improve. And that is it. That is uh, everything from my side that I wanted to tell you today. Do you have any questions? Okay.
so we are going to meet again in two weeks and that's going to be our last session. So please try to get your questions uh, so that I could answer you, so that I could explain to you, because uh, I do not really want to go into the detail on the theory because you already have it in the course and you can do that at your own pace, at your own time. But if there is something that is particularly troublesome, oh, well, then we can cover that in class in two weeks. Okay then, then if there are no more questions, I will not keep you any longer. And uh, thank you for joining. Uh, how we can gather recorded our audios, uh, they are in your WhatsApp. If you want, you can just download them. I think that I can probably try downloading them myself and putting them into a folder, not sure whether it's, I think it worked, it used to work at least. Um, WhatsApp is not like, it's um, an additional tools and additional means of getting the information. Uh, everything that is there is in your course. So if anything, it's not that you are missing out, but it's great when we have more opportunities rather than less, right? Okay. Okay, and then if no more questions, then you have a lovely day and I will see you in two weeks and anytime in our WhatsApp chat. So bye-bye.